Looks like an OD. We just called you in to sign off. Uh, she was found by a neighbour. The uh, night duty manager found him. No ID, but she lives up there. 2B. Hello, what's your name? Good morning, mate. Come on. <sighs> what? This is your wake-up call. I didn't know him, not personally, but I know he checked in alone. You sure about that? Absolutely. Here's the dead girl at the bottom of the stairs. Uh, she was like that when I got home. What, so you just left her there, in the garbage? So there was no-one else with him? Definitely not. Don't explain this. Huh? Someone was here, but they took off in a hurry. Well, she was already dead. What was I gonna do? I don't know anything. Why don't you come with us? You're coming with us. Come. Oh, change your pants. Do you guys want to see his face? I know him. Couldn't happen to a bigger prick. He's a crook? No. no he's a judge. I am Bar Irving. See, we know you're lying, but we're not sure what about. Look, can't we take this into the office? No. So tell me, did you party with the judge or did you kill the judge? No, wait a minute. It was an overdose. Oh, so you were there when he died? <laughs> no. So you had sex with him? What? No. Well, you're the night manager. You work at night. So? So the maid didn't find him. Room service didn't find him. You did. Look, Ashley, we understand that you are the man. You're the man who gets people things, people like the judge. So when he wants stuff, you get it and he gives you a tip, a big one. So you got him heroin, you left him here to shoot up, you came back and he was dead. No. I never got him any heroin, right? Someone else supplied him with that. So what did you supply him with? Escorts, OK? I supplied him with top-of-the-line escorts once a fortnight. That's all. So, this girl you dumped in the garbage, I assume she had a name, or didn't you bother to find that out either? It was money, and I didn't dump her. Uh, she was there. Monique who? Sakester. You didn't think to call anyone? She was already dead. What were they going to do? They're going to bring her back to life? How about get her out of the garbage? How long has she lived with you? Uh, a couple of months. We were... Well, we were getting it together. You sure know? you were. Get stuffed, man, all right? I was a fashion photographer. Uh, Mitch Blake. You might have heard of me. I said... I used to take all the, all the covers and shots. I don't care what shots you've taken. Take a look at these pictures. Does she have family? Parents? Uh, what do I know? Well, you must know something about her. She liked rabbits. Uh, it was her birthday next week. How old was she? 20. Yeah, she was, uh, was going to call her sister. And what was her name? I don't know. Look, can I get out of here? I don't feel very well. 
Sit up. Uh, what was the last time you saw her? Uh, last night. We went to a party. Where? I don't remember. What time did you leave? <sighs> Useless. Mitch! <sighs> Matt, we can't just keep him here. We only have his word she was dead. He could have been the one who shot her up. Look, he's hopeless. And he's an addict. But do you really think he's a killer? This is somebody's daughter. They have no idea she's dead. He can stay right where he is till we get something out of him. Besides vomit. Escort business must pay well. Hi, I'm Norelle. Wasn't expecting you quite this early. Oh, great use of stripes. Matching. Great, come on in. I think you'll love the plants. <laughs> Terrazzo floors are so in right now. And if you don't mind me saying, my gay clients always have the best taste. <laughs> have you been together long? A while. Oh, lovely. We met at work. Oh, great. Yeah. You're not Malcolm and Glenn, my courtyard clients. Simon and Duncan, state's finest. We're investigating a suspicious death. Another of your clients. Different business. Oh, my God. How did you find me? Look, if anyone finds out, I'll, I've got people due here any minute. Well, that's not our problem, Miss Anderson. We need a statement from you. Look, I don't know what happened. He paid, we had sex, he was fine. I came out of the shower, he was dead. What can I tell you? The agency said he always asked for you. He seemed to like me. But it was strictly business every second Sunday. Did he use heroin every time? Did you ever use the drugs with him? No, never. Did you help him shoot up? No, that was his thing, not mine. Well, you'll need to come with us, make an official statement. Sure. On now? Yes. Uh, nobody knows that I do that. My parents, my friends. It's just a statement. But I told you everything that I know. You failed to report a death. That's an offence under the Coroner's Act. Technically. But we do need an official statement. Why don't you come past the office when you finish with your clients, OK? OK, absolutely. Thank you so much. Technically. Anyone banging Iron Bar Irving once a fortnight deserves a break. We need to sign off on these ODs. Where are we at? This is our girl, Sarge. My next thanks to a 19-year-old junkie getting by on youth allowance, a bit of petty theft and some waitressing on a good day. We couldn't get anything out of the flat, mate, so we went back there and we found an address book. We've managed to locate her parents that are on their way in to make the ID. OK. Your man. Richard Irving, judge in the county court. Oh, we all know him, of course. Yeah, Simon's his biggest fan. Hard man, hard judge. Never heard any rumours about Harold, no? That's yeah, typical. High and mighty on the bench, and then on the weekends he's out shooting up heroin with prostitutes. Not that we allow our personal feelings to get in the way of our work. No, ma'am. Whatever else he did, Richard Irving was a well-respected judge. Kid gloves on this one. And I'd like to be on top of the case, so let me know if anything awkward comes up. Not apart from being found dead from a drug overdose in a hotel room with a prostitute, awkward. Yeah. I've uh, moved his autopsy up the list. Better we know sooner rather than later what we're dealing with. What about our girl? Irving gets top billing because he's a judge? Oh, it works for us. Yeah, you know how these things go. Yeah, unfairly. Uh, there's a bunch of family members down at the morgue waiting to do IDs. She'd end up like this. I tried to warn her. How did it all start? She met some dropout at a netball match. She was someone's older brother. Real low life, but charming enough for Monique. Where is he now? Long gone. He hung around just long enough to get my sister hooked on heroin, and then he split. When did you last see her? Christmas. She lurched in. High as a kite, drooping over everyone. It was awful. Mum and Dad, they, they told her not to come back. It was her birthday next week. How did you know that? Her flatmate said that she wanted to see you. I 
I was the one who told them to kick her out. Tough love, you know. I thought if we stopped supporting her, she'd stop using... Come home clean like she used to be. Never happened. Oh, it's the photo you asked for. That's the wife. Apparently. Yes. That's my husband. His name? Richard Wallace Irving. <laughs> you okay? Yes, I'm. I'm... Driver. Um, what? Since when are we a chauffeur service? Since Superintendent Waverley said kid gloves. There's not much more I can tell you. I, um. I came home after the opening. I didn't call him or anything. I see your husband was an art collector. No, that's me. Really? I like to surround myself with interesting things. I was sorting through these when I got the news. What are they for? I support young artists. These are the ones that didn't make it into the exhibition. Was your husband with you? For the speeches, but he left early. And went to the hotel? Yes, his work is very stressful. Sometimes he stays in the city overnight. Alone? Of course. Did you know your husband uses heroin, Mrs. Evans? My husband and I led separate lives. Now, I, um, I really must get on some follow-ups for the gallery. Can't someone else do that for you? Life goes on, detective, and... This exhibition is important to me. Did your husband share your interest? No. Did you share his? Your husband wasn't the only one using heroin, was he, Mrs. Irving? I am not a user. Then what? If, hypothetically speaking, my husband and I were to purchase certain products in the same way as we do wine or imported cigars, that hardly makes us drug addicts. Heroin is heroin, whether you buy from a friend or from a street pusher. Thank you for the lift home, detectives. Come on. What's he doing here? There you go. Two drug cases. ODs, why would Jarvis care? Stanley, you're holding someone of mine, Mitch Blake. And a very good afternoon to you, Superintendent. He's the bloke on the nod in interview one. Yeah, well, I need him. He's helping us with uh, some inquiries. I would suggest that uh, he wouldn't be much help to you in his current state. Look, I'm across both your cases, OK? Monique, what's her face? She was a low-life junkie. The judge was a high-end user. If you're looking for a connection, there isn't one. Uh, we like to be thorough here at Homicide. Look, Mitch Blake had nothing to do with the judge's death, I can guarantee it. No one's suggesting that he was involved, sir. Well, why are you still holding him? We want to speak to him. He might know something about Monique Sangster's death, sir. Ah, crap. You just want to watch him climbing a wall. He left her in the garbage. Yeah, well, I have a very good reason for getting him back out there on the street. Thanks, Stanley. Bloody idiot. I'm sorry. I told I'm you. I'm sorry. Huh? We give you as much as you need. We give you just as much I as know, you I need. Know. You do not go to outside sources. I know. I'm sorry. I need you to be able to function. I will. I promise. Shut you. up. Shut up. Maddie? Maddie, can you hear that? What? I think it's the pub calling. Nah. <laughs> Come on, Danny. Jen, shout. Oh, oh. about time. Ah, Ronnie. Evening all. Come for a drink? Uh, no, you've got a problem. Well, actually, two problems. The tox screen on Iron Bar's heroin, it was laced. Laced? I just put that in the out tray. I'll pop it back in your in tray. That's the first problem. Second one is, it was two for the price of one. Your girl had the same dose. Two hot shots. Two homicides. So the deaths are connected. Bloody Jarvis. <laughs> I 
seem to remember you insisting these two cases had nothing to do with each other. I know, I know. And that was the basis for your demand for us to release Mitchell Blake back into your custody. Yes, and having him back out in the streets is going to be invaluable. Not for us. We need to talk to him again. All right. You want Mitch, I'll bring him in. I just need to find him first. Look, how can you be so sure these cases are connected, eh? OK, they're connected. And the heroin that killed these two didn't just come from the same batch, it came from the same baggie. The judge and the junkie had to have shared. How do you know that? The spikes are exactly the same. Same chemical components. If the whole batch was bad, everyone who scored on Sunday would be dead. We'd need a truck out there to pick up the bodies. So this is a personal supply? And we're definitely talking homicide. Two homicides. You wouldn't put that much cleaning product in your dose unless you wanted to kill someone. High-class judge and low-life junkie, why? That's what you lot need to find out, the connection between these two people, which, as I said, is why we need Mitchell Blake. In which case, as I said, I'll find him. And when are you going to do that? There must be other people you need to talk to. Get on with it. I'll let you know when i found Mitch Blake. Jarvis has taken the piss. He'd know exactly where Mitch Blake is. Tell me about it. You leave me to deal with Superintendent Jarvis. You two get over to Judge Irving's place, see what the wife has to say about a possible connection. Ah, uh, Superintendent, a word. Uh, what now, uh, my officer? Look, you want me to find Mitch Blake or not? What I want is a clear understanding of the rules here. All right. The rules are... I tell you what the rules are. I'm a superintendent. You're a senior sergeant. Can we forget about rank for a minute? You and I both know that you could lay your hands on Mitchell Blake any time you wanted to. Let's get on the same page here, shall we? Share our information, share our conclusions, nothing held back. Well, as soon as I have enough information to draw any conclusions, you'll be the first to know, Stanley, OK? Good. You get your snitch in here. My people will talk to Annette Irving. <laughs> but we didn't associate with drug addicts. Even though you are one. I explained. It's personal use only. Once a fortnight, if that. I didn't need it. My husband certainly didn't. He wouldn't have had anything to do with anyone like that. No. The night he died, he was with a high-class prostitute. Well, there you go. He must have got his heroin from her. We don't think so. Well, you said yourself she was a prostitute. Oh, not all prostitutes are drug addicts. Uh, Mrs Irving, we need to find out who your husband's supplier was. I don't know. He would come home every fortnight with a bag, he'd leave me a small amount, then he'd go off to the hotel to spend the Sunday night. That's what he was doing all this time. He was with prostitutes. Last Sunday night? Exactly the same as usual. He left you some from his bag? Yes. Your husband's stash was spiked. Two people are dead. Somehow this girl ended up using your husband's heroin. So, where is it? Down the toilet. The police came to me on Monday morning to tell me about Richard and I flushed it down the loo. Uh, are you saying that I, I might have died too? Maybe. Or maybe you poisoned your husband's share and you left yours alone. Your husband's heroin was spiked. It was laced with a common bathroom cleaning product. The kind of thing a jealous wife might put in her husband's heroin when she found out that he was using prostitutes. I didn't know he was using prostitutes until you so delicately spelt it out for me. Besides, I wouldn't know a cleaning product if I fell over one. I've never cleaned a bathroom in my life. You don't seem very upset about your husband's murder. Whatever I feel, I'm not going to trot it out to satisfy your ideas of what grief is supposed to look like. I'm looking for it. Look a bit harder. <laughs> you know how it is, Bernice. Oh, yes, I know how it is. I know how you work, Terry. Cards so close to your chest, they're practically sewn on. Now, Bernice. I don't want to hear it. You should have told us from the beginning you suspected the connection between the two homicides. I didn't know. I want this Mitchell Blake down in that interview room within the hour. Let's see what I can do. Hmm. Thanks for putting me in it. You put yourself in it, Terry. We had an agreement. If you'd been up front with me from the beginning, we would not be here now. He looks different. Methadone in, heroin out. He's a new man. 50 minutes, Terry. Well done. We can start by telling us who supplied Monique with the heroin. She had her own pusher, I had mine. How long do you reckon you'll need him for? 
as long as it takes. And you never shared? Never. You were flatmates. You shared the coffee, the breakfast cereal, and the heroin. No. Did you ever see anyone deliver drugs to Judge Irving at his hotel room? No. He always had his own supply. And did anyone else ever use heroin with him in the room? Mm, not that I saw. So how did she get the money to buy it? I don't know. Did she ever work as a prostitute? No. <clears throat> well, maybe. The escort agency insisted that you were the only one he asked for. That doesn't mean I was the only one that he saw. I'm pretty conservative. Nothing kinky. I got the impression that he sometimes sampled a bit of rough trade as well, on the side. Where did she pick up when she was hooking? I left her in the garbage. I mean, to do that is bad enough. To drag her down even more, I, I can't tell you this stuff, and I can't. Monique was murdered. We need to know why now. Where did she work as a prostitute? The street? No. Nah. Where then? Sometimes she'd go to a party and pick up. The party you went to on Sunday night. This party, was it an opening night? A young artist's exhibition. How do you know? Because that's where she met the judge. Why'd you have Judge Irving in your sights? I didn't. Look, he, he wasn't the one we were after. The time is long gone for you to be keeping anything from us, Look, Terry. I've been working on this for over a year. Fine, and now you're going to share it with us. Bernice. All of it. Now, this is how most people see the drug world. Four levels. At the bottom, you've got the junkies, like Mitch Blake, the Sanks, the girl, then the pushers who supply them. Then you've got the middlemen. These guys get their drugs from the importers. Now, I believe that there is an importer working on the fringe of all this. Who? A high-end player with a small niche market. I mean, this guy, he flies under the radar because he's got a small clientele with a small but high-paying turnover. So his middleman supplies people like Judge Irving? That's right, Polly's showbiz type sports people, the works. Where does Mitchell Blake fit into all this? Mitch used to be a photographer. Good one. Arts, fashion. That'd be a while ago. Oh, look, he moves easily in that world. We picked him up for possession. He tipped us off to this high-end trading. Which gave you Judge Irving. Right. Now, we all know Iron Bar Irving's reputation. Mm, hard man puts everyone away. Used to. And about five years ago, things changed. How's that? Well, all of a sudden he's letting people off. CSOs, bonds, suspended sentences. But not everyone. No. Smart boy. Only the clients of this bloke. David Karras, solicitor. So you think this guy's a high-end importer? I know he is. So what's his business worth? High-grade, wealthy clients, big bucks. So did Karras know that you made the connection between him and Irving? No, I don't think so. But if you did know, that'd be motivation to spike the judge's heroin. Hmm? You could have told us Karras was a suspect. Yeah, we've had that conversation, Freeman. Let's move on. Fair enough. Arrest Karras, shake him on the hot No, sides. no way. This is all speculation. I haven't got any proof. I need Karras' middleman to tie him to the drugs. So pull the middleman in. Well, I need to identify him first. That's why I put Mitch back out there. Yeah, now, let's move on this. This is no longer just a drug investigation. Look, I'll talk to Mitch, but this is still my gig. All right? If Karras thinks you're onto him for the murders, I'll lose him on the drugs. We'll bear that in mind. There's another angle we could work on this, Annette Irving. Let's push her. Talk to her, see if you can ID Karras. I told you before, I have no idea where the heroin came from. That was my husband's department. You never mentioned anyone? Like, the place where he picked it up? Mrs Irving, anything would help. Well, it was a man, and it was always the same man. How do you know that? Because my husband said he's been good to us today or he's packed a little light on this time. A name? He never said. I never asked. Sorry. OK, if you can think of anything, please, come on. Detective, it, it wasn't always like this. After our son died, everything changed. He wanted to be a painter. My husband wanted him to go into the law or, or medicine. Did you ever meet my husband? I did, yeah. Well, then you know. He always had to get his way. Kyle couldn't take a trick. He hanged himself when he was 15. I don't remember when we started taking the drugs, but I do remember it took the edge off the pain. My husband didn't die in that hotel room. He died with Kyle. 
we both did. I mean, they've got me taking the publicity shots for the closing. And guess what? What? The bloke who runs the place likes my stuff. Said he, uh, he might even put up a few pictures in the next exhibition. That's great. Yeah, that's great, that's great. What's going on with the supply side of things? Uh, not much. I can give you a face to that middleman you're looking for. What? When were you going to tell me that? I just wanted to wait till I got a name. And the name is? Well, I don't know. That's why I'm waiting. Look, I just wanted to do things right. Mitch, we had a deal. I'm keeping my end. What deal? Can you point this guy out to us? Sure. I'm covering the closing party tonight. He'll be there. And I can bring extras. wife. You'd never dreamed that her husband was bonking a prostitute and took a hot shot a few days ago, would you? No. Still see Mitch? Yep. And Jarvis? Yeah, he's down the back. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Do you like it? Yeah. And at Irving, I put the exhibition together. Yeah, it's terrific. I really like the sense of proportion. Yes, he has a wonderful eye for detail, and he's only 23. Wow. I'm going to make a marvellous bedroom piece. Mm -hmm. Do you know, darling? Anyway, I'll leave you to it. Don't hesitate to ask any questions. Thank you. Okay. It's perspective, not proportion. Right. Mitch, just gather the signal. Good evening, gentlemen. Do this quietly. Uh, apologies, ladies and gentlemen. No appreciation for uh, the art. It isn't mine. It was in your pocket. You must have planted it. At least try to be original. Look, we can do a deal. I've been here before. I know how it works. Good. You give me a name, we can talk. I can tell you everyone my people sell to, starting with the man you arrested with me. Mitch Blake, photographer. 32, buys a quarter ounce a week. Look, I'm not interested in who your people sell to. I want to know who the importer is. You give me that name, we can talk. No deal. If you're looking at five years, we can halve that. I'll do the time. Look. Let's stop pissing about. Yes, let's. We know the name. Starts with K, ends with S. Solicitor. If you expect me to spell it out, think again. His smack may be refined, he isn't. I tell you I'm dead. I can't help you. He's not going to change his mind, Terry. Maybe we should come at this from another angle. Let's get Karras in and question him on the homicides. And achieve what? You can't tie Karras to the murders. We can put him under pressure, see what we come up with. He is not the type of bloke to confess up front. Trust me, Bernice. OK, spirit of cooperation. It's a message from a snitch. He wants to meet tomorrow, first thing. Maybe we can hold off bringing Karras in till then, yes? Yeah, right. OK, as long as you take one of my crew in the spirit of cooperation. <laughs> Hilarious. What happened to that Adrian Spencer dude? We're still holding him. Yeah, but he bought it. That I was arrested too. Yeah, we think so. Look, you're fine, your cover's not blown. What's the word in the street? You said you had something for us. Everyone's strung out. I mean, the pushers haven't got any product. Once Spencer was arrested, the supply went cold. Mitch, blind Freddy could work that out. Yeah, but the word is, there's some very special gear coming in. When? The next couple of days. Sure about this? That's what I'm hearing. 
good lad. Piss off. So what now? Now, obvious. We keep watching Karis until he picks up the gear. Basically, over the last 48 hours, Karis spent his days in the office and his nights at home. The only time he left the house, apart from to go to work, is when he put out the garbage and then brought it in again the next day. In other words, we got bugger all. Right, it's only been a couple of days, Bernice. Don't worry, he'll make his move. Two days ago, you said the drugs would be arriving yesterday. Why hasn't he made his move already? This is a very careful operator we're talking about here. The world thinks he's a respected businessman and solicitor. The middleman, Spencer? Still won't name Karis, ma'am. Uh, too scared. <laughs> Should be wearing a nappy. You're sure he actually knows Karis? He knows him. Spencer is one of Karis's many clients, Sarge, and he's had a dream run from Judge Irving. Have you offered him more incentives, reduced sentence, protective custody? No, he's not buying it. I could have something here. I've been processing registration numbers of people who've been visiting Karis both at his home and at his office. There's one guy, Dean Nutley. He's met with Karis four times in the last two days. At his office and at home, so it's probably not legal. No, get this. Nutley is a manager of a shipping wharf. So he could be bringing in the heroin for Karis. Exactly. Well, hang on, how do we know they're not just good mates? Well, we've gone through Karis's phone records for the last three months and the times they connect coincide with Serge's a high-quality smack. Pick him up and question him. Hey, you can't be serious. <laughs> hey, excuse me. If we pull in Nutley, he'll clam up just like Adrian Spencer, then we really will have bugger all. What are you looking at? Now, Terry, when you say we, do you mean drug squad or homicide? It's a joint operation. Really? Well, if that's the case, let's talk about how arresting Karras and drug importation charges is going to assist us in solving the homicides of Judge Irving and Monique Sangster. Where are you going with this, Bernice? You wouldn't even know Nutley existed if it wasn't for Stanley and his team. Oh, I see. So this is a negotiation, is Call it? it what you like, Terry. At the end of the day, I want those homicides in the out tray. OK, what do you have in mind? If and when Karras is arrested, I want your guarantee that you will hand him over to us for questioning on the murders. Then what? Well, if he confesses, homicide takes precedence. Your drugs charges will have to wait. So, so you get the kudos. Oh, or you do. It depends if we can crack Karis or not. <laughs> oh, oh, you are a cracker, Bernice. Thank you. <sighs> OK, you got a deal. But I'll tell you what, if Nutley's made contact with Karis, this thing is going down soon. Let's not bugger it up. I want people at Karis's house. I want people on the wharves. I want people in between. Relax, Freeman. Could be here all night. We could be here another two days. Now, look at the short straw. Stuck in a car with me, you mean? <laughs> Unit one to all units. Any sign? Unit two, negative. Unit three, negative. Copy that. Keep awake. No mucking about. <laughs> what does he mean, no mucking about? What does he think we're going to be doing? Well, it was clearly meant for Simon and Wolfie. <laughs> Been a while since you've done one of these, eh, Sarge? Not so long. Did you bring that thermos of coffee? <laughs> yep. Um, I think Jarvis is married. Mm, if he is, my heart goes out to Mrs. Jarvis. <laughs> oh. Oh. Help keep us warm. Window. Oh. Well, if you open the door. <laughs> hey. Yeah, that's him. Unit three to all units. Nutley's just arrived for work. How long's his shift? Doesn't matter, he's the manager. He can come and go as he pleases. So keep your eyes open. So keep your eyes open. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you think it was a good idea to put Duncan and Jarvis in the same car, Sarge? No, Jarvis requested it. Anyway, Duncan can more than look after himself. So what's the story with your informant, Mitch Blake? No story. He's a junkie. And you're maintaining him, right? He's got a pretty serious habit. He's trying to get straight. <laughs> and you're helping him. Listen, 
I keep him straight enough to get the job done, that's all. And what if the job gets him killed? He's just another pawn you're prepared to sacrifice. <laughs> I didn't make him a junkie. He did that all by himself. He's trying to get straight. I'm helping him do that. <laughs> helping yourself, you mean? Chill him up, spit him out, and if they get killed in the process, Pooh, who cares? Just like Claire. How I deal with my informants is up to me. Unit 3 to all units. Nutley's leaving. Copy. Nutley's on the move. We go. Standing by. Copy that. Good sign. Late night exit. He's picked up the drugs. He wants to get shot of him as soon as he can. He's going to meet Karen. He's putting a bag in the food. Stay on him. Keep us advised. Unit 3 in pursuit. Got your ears on, Stanley? Yeah, no changes were still in place. Uh, Karras is still in home. If Nutley turns right at the main drag, I reckon we're on to him. He just did that, heading in your direction. Heads up, Stanley, 10 minutes. Back off, Major Thorpe. We'll take up the tail. Don't want to spook him. Copy that. Pulling back. Jarvis's call. Go, go, go. Moving into position now. Do you want to check it? Do I need to check it? <laughs> I'm Detective Superintendent Jarvis of the Drug Squad. This is Detective Senior Sergeant Stanley Wolf of Homicide. You're under arrest. We need to ask you some questions in relation to a double homicide. Homicide? <laughs> Get real. I've never killed anyone in my life. You import drugs, you've killed plenty of people. What drugs? The drugs that were found in your possession when you were arrested. They weren't in my possession. They were found on my neighbor's property. Yeah. We all know what Four happened. sworn officers saw you chuck it over the fence, idiot. You are with us, the I don't like your chances, Bernice. This guy isn't going to admit to two murders. Well, let's just see, shall we? Suit yourself. OK. You got me on the drugs. I can accept that. And the drugs link you to the murders. Crap. I'm not linked to anything. You spiked Judge Irving's supply. Why would I do that? Well, why don't you tell us that? I can't. Because I didn't do it. Is anyone saying I did? Is anyone even saying I supplied the judge? No. So, charge me with possession with intent to supply. Five years, and I'm back in the world. I can live with it. But murder? Forget it. You know her? No. She was a junkie. She's dead. That's your doing. She couldn't afford my stuff. I sell quality gear. Uncut. Pure. Not anymore. Now, his stuff wasn't pure. In fact, we know it was a hot shot. Why would I kill someone who kept me in business? Hmm? Doesn't make sense. He got his drugs from you. And he died from a hot shot. How do you explain that? Look at Adrian Spencer. We've got informants on the ground. Dean Nutley is in there just singing his socks off. You're gone. I don't think so. Nobody would rat me out. So let's say you're telling the truth. 
It's novel. So, so if you didn't spike Judge Irving's supply? Who did? Adrian Spencer. <laughs> Nell Bowles. So who else could have done it? The judge's buffer? His buffer. He's a bloody judge, isn't he? What do you think, he's just gonna wander up to Spencer, say thank you very much, and pop a baggie in his pocket? He was way too smart for that. So how did the judge pick up his drugs then? He didn't. Someone else did. I knew you'd be back eventually. After our son died, everything changed. The joy went out of everything. Richard blamed himself. I think he knew deep down what he'd done and that's why he started taking the drugs. But then he, he told me he, he needed time to be alone. That he needed time to grieve for our son, but he lied. All the time he was seeing prostitutes. Maybe it was just another way of escaping. No, no, I don't believe that. He might have told himself that, but it's just an excuse, a pathetic excuse. So then you killed him? Yes, I did. You killed a young girl as well. I know, and that wasn't supposed to happen. Her name was Monique Sangster. She was only 19 oh. years old. It just never occurred to me that they'd share it. I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm so sorry.